Good afternoon, Parker. Good afternoon, sir. General Faversham is waiting for you on the terrace. Aye. Dr. Sutton, sir. You've had a long journey, Doctor. Oh, it's worth a journey to join old comrades. Are they all coming? Same crowd. You're older. Ah. Sit down, help yourself. Thank you. Well, what's the news from London? Well, haven't you heard? Gordon's dead. Murdered in Khartoum. That's no news to me. I said that was going to happen years ago when they first sent Gordon to Egypt. He wasn't hard enough. They wanted someone like you out there. Just what I was going to say myself. First time for a hundred years, there hasn't been a Faversham in the army, and look at the mess they make. I'm too old and the boy's too young. My own fault for not marrying sooner. You remember the boy? He's 15 years old today. I'm going to let him dine with us tonight. Oh, good. I don't mind telling you, Doctor, I'm worried about him. Huh? I can't understand the boy. I sent him to the best army school in England, spent half my time telling him about his famous ancestors, and what do you think? I found him this morning reading a poetry book. Shelley, of all people. So I want you to help me lick this boy into shape and make him hard. Gentlemen, the Crimea. Oh. Old comrade. Oh. Old comrade. Old comrade. Arnold. Arnold. <coughs> Cry me up, I Joe. Ah, war was war in those days, and men were men. No room for weaklings. Balaclava, for instance. Here, you fellows remember the positions. Now, here, these nuts were the Russians. Guns, guns, guns. On the right, the British infantry. The thin red line. There was the Commander-in-Chief. And here was I, at the head of the old 68th. The right was impossible, the left was blocked. Behind us was the Commander-in-Chief. I realized the position in a flash. I said, the 68th will move forward. Immediately, one of my subalterns came to me, shaking. Absolutely shaking. I said, what's wrong, Travers? I'm afraid to face those guns, sir. I said, would you rather face me? <laughs> he took one look at my face and off he went. Ten minutes later, he was shot to pieces at the head of his men. As a soldier should be, eh? I quite agree with you, General. I can tolerate nerves before a battle, but I can't stand cowardice. I remember a soldier at Inkerman when a Cossack charged down on him. I saw a man raise his musket, fumble with his trigger, and then turn and run. The Cossack's lance went in at the back of his neck and came out in his throat. Best thing that could have happened to him. Do you remember Wilmington? Wilmington? I know Servi's family. Father killed an Inkerman. Grandfather blown up under Nelson. An uncle scalped by Indians. All splendid records. Splendid. <laughs> what happened? Well, the general ordered him to gallop through the lines with a message. Paralyzed with funk. Couldn't move. General sent his adjutant. Killed before he'd gone 50 yards. Sent his ADC, head blown off. Then he went through with the message himself. Lost his arm. Ruined his cricket? Oh, yes, I remember now. He disgraced his family. His father disowned him. Hung about for a year or two and then blew his brains out. Ah, he had the courage to blow his brains out. Courage? <laughs> Last spark of decency, that's all. There's no place in England for a coward. Harry, past 11. Time you were in your bed. No, 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 no. Sit you down, my boy. Sit you down. <coughs> hey, it's the boy's birthday and we've not drunk his health. Go ahead, General. A toast to Harry. And may he prove the bravest of the Faversham's. To Harry. 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 Thank you. That's right, boy. <laughs> Good night, Father. Good night, Harry. Good night, gentlemen. Good
Harry. You don't remember me. I remember you, though, when you were about so long. I was doctor in your father's regiment in the Crimea. I knew your mother, too, Harry. She was my friend. Now, I'd like you to think of me as your friend, too. If ever you should need me, here's my car. Not much use to anybody nowadays, but... But if ever you feel the need, write to me. Come and see me. That's very kind of you, sir. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night, Harry. ago, General Gordon was murdered in Khartoum, and the British army was withdrawn into Egypt without punishing the crime. Today, the Royal North Surrey Regiment is under orders to join Sir Herbert Kitchener's Anglo-Egyptian army for the reconquest of the Sudan. <laughs> oh, uh, what's Egypt like, John? Principal is sand, sweat, and sunstroke. Oh, lovely. When do we start? Can't say. Not before next Thursday. Heavens no. It took them ten years to make up their minds. We'll be lucky if we start in a month. Then, then I can give you these. Mr. Harry Fabisham, Captain John Durrance, and one for Fat Face Willoughby. Oh, what's all this? An invitation to the Butters family bean feast. Complete with regimental string band, strawberry ices, and a performing troupe of hired waiters. Oh. <laughs> Here's my sister's coming of age. Ethne's 21 next Thursday, so father's letting himself go. Champagne? Gallon. Oysters? Oysters in June? Don't be a fool. I had a, my coming out. I, I had the sense of a ball in March. <laughs> father's going to be terrific. He's written four speeches already, and he's been rehearsing them in the bathroom. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, officers of my old regiment, this is an occasion for double rejoicing. I am proud to announce not only my daughter's coming of age, but also her engagement to the son of my old comrade in arms, Mr. Harry Favisham of the Royal North Surrey Regiment. What? Him? Our own Harry Favisham. Yes, very sudden. <laughs> They've been signaling for it for months. Good luck, Harry. Thanks. Good luck, Harry. Thanks, John. What about this Egypt business? You can't take it with you, you know. When the dervishes catch a white man, they cut his nose off and hang him up by the toes. Oh, disgusting business. All the money falling out of your pocket. I'll see you at dinner. Did I frighten the poor lad? Shouldn't be surprised. I don't know what's come over the lad. Can't take a joke. Never takes a drink. Moons about all day. Meets poetry all night. That's love. Give me indigestion. <laughs> oh, time to get changed. So long. So long. I'm sorry, John. I was a fool to make a joke of it like that. I know how you feel about it. That's all right, Peter. It was for her to decide. I wish it had been you all the same. See what mess. After all, there are plenty of other girls. Plenty. For other men. Um, uh, many years ago, I fought in the Crimea. Beside that very gallant soldier, General Favisham, whose death last year was uh, such a loss to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tonight, I am proud to announce the engagement of my daughter to Harry Favisham, my dear old friend's only son. Bravo. <laughs> Ten years ago, when Harry was a boy, I raised my glass in his honor 
with the toast, may he prove the bravest of all the Faversham's. Harry Faversham, coupled with the name of my daughter, Ethne. Oh, Harry. 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 Good luck. Good luck, Harry. The company is now dismissed. The business of dancing will now commence. <laughs> Colonel, you're off on this Egyptian affair, eh? Of course, it's only a minor campaign. It'll do your world of good. The army is too soft nowadays. You mean not hard enough? Of course. Now, the Crimea. Ah, war was war in those days, and men were men. Let me tell you what happened at Balaclava. Well, you remember the position, Doctor, don't you? Only too well. I was over there. On the extreme left. Here were the Russian batteries behind the nuts. Gun, 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 gun. On the right, the British infantry. The thin red line. I suppose they didn't get much to eat. What are you talking about? Well, sir, you said they were so, so thin. Ah, the line I meant, not the men. Oh. By here was the commander in chief. And here was I, at the head of the old 68. Sorry, Father, I had to drag Egypt into it. Tired of Egypt already? We have it for breakfast and lunch. And the honor of the regiment for supper. I suppose he quite understands you're marrying me and not the regiment. He's not quite sure about that. Are you quite sure? When we are old and creaky with rheumatism, we shall look back and think of this night. Ethne, you will never creak, never in your life. We shall creak with the best of them. And through the creaks will come the sound of this dance music. And the light of the moon. And the scent of the flowers. This is a solemn occasion, Harry. A memory is being born tonight. A memory that will stand the test of all the years. Moments like this are better than all the memories in the world. The memories will be the best. Because they'll be right out of reach of uncertainty and care. Memories just float about on their own, with no shadows upon them. Dance music, the moon, and evening primroses, that's all. You're not going to rob me of my solitary dance, Edmund. John, I'm so sorry, it's my fault. Is this your dance going on? It's just started. Dear, there's a partner waiting for me. Excuse me. It wasn't his fault, John. It was mine. I talk too much. Shall we dance? It's a polka. Don't you like a polka? A bit jerky, isn't it? Not like saying goodbye in Moscow. I'm sorry, John. There's no need to be sorry. It's terribly hard to explain. There's nothing to explain. You don't expect a girl to sit down and write out a catalog. Points why I love Mr. A, points why I don't love Mr. B. It's only Mr. B who sits down and puzzles out the points against him. I never saw such an impressive list. Reasons why Ethne Burroughs doesn't love John Dulles. Reason one. Don't, John. Oh, I put down about 40 reasons altogether. Reason 41 was she loves the other man. So I crossed the rest out. Thank you. Well, Harry's a fine fellow. Were you to help him, he should have a splendid career. You'll enjoy helping him, won't you? I hope I shall be able to. You will. I think you'll be very happy. And I think I shall always love you. Oh, John, dear. I'm so sorry. You're all rubbish. I shall be all right. You're not going to be sorry for anything tonight. Come and dance that polka. I've just learned it.
Trevor's room. See what he wants, Robert. He wants to see you privately, sir. Oh, very well. Well, Vavisham, I want you to accept this, sir. What is it? I am resigning my commission. Resigning your commission? What do you mean? I mean just that, sir. I don't understand you, Vavisham. I should have taken this action months ago. I only accepted a commission for my father's sake, because all his family have been soldiers. But when he died, my duty towards him was done. Your duty towards him? Have you no duty towards your country? Oh, go and lie down in a dark room, my boy. You'll be all right in the morning. I've made up my mind, sir. Faversham, if you do this, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. I'm sorry, sir. I've made up my mind. You're deliberately shocking your duty, sir. I refuse to accept your resignation. I am within my rights to resign, sir. You cannot refuse. I never thought I should live to see a Faversham play the coward. May I go, sir? Yes. Go. The officers well? are... Well! waiting, sir. Gentlemen, final orders have just arrived. Well, the regiment well, leaves on Thursday. We march to Portsmouth and embark at midday. I, uh... I've just received this telegram from General Kitchener. Glad to welcome your regiment to my command. Well, that's very nice, sir. Gentlemen, there will be one change in regimental orders for the 15th. Mr. Faversham has seen fit to send in his papers on the eve of his regiment sailing for active service. His place will be taken by Mr. Parker, who was to have remained at the depot. Young Peter, for me, won't you? I will, sir. Both eyes. Little lemmy ducks. What's she crying for? <laughs> yeah. Well, goodbye, Eggy. Take care of your ma. <laughs> goodbye, lovey. Don't take on now. I'm all right. Kids are going to miss you. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye, father. Goodbye. The dogs are going to miss you. Yes, sir.
happened. Peter left last night. Father went with him to see you all off. They've cancelled it. You're not going after all? They've gone. The regiment sailed this morning. But I haven't gone with them. I don't understand. We've discussed it so often. The futility of this idiotic Egyptian adventure. The madness of it all. The ghastly waste of time that we can never have again. What have you done, Harry? I've resigned my commission. I should have done it sooner. Long ago. It's released me from the life of an imposter. That's all a man is when he fails to be true to the things he believes in. I believe in our happiness. I believe in the work to be done here to save an estate that's near to ruin. To save all those people who've been neglected by my family because they preferred glory in India, glory in China, glory in Africa. Excuse me, miss. This package has just arrived for Mr. Favisham, addressed in your care and marked urgent, miss. Thank you. Captain John Durrance. Well, they had a fine send off, Ethne. I went aboard and had lunch with them before they sailed. Peter has a cabin with John Dunnans and Willoughby. I'm glad the three boys are going to be together. Father... Yes, it was a wonderful sight. The vessel steaming out into the channel and all those men cheering and... May I speak to you a moment, sir? It was cruel to send these. Cruel but just. That's what you think, isn't it? You needn't tell me, Ethne. I can see it quite clearly in your eyes. We agreed always to be honest with each other, Harry. To keep no secret from each other. When you did this, did you believe that I should be proud of you? I thought you'd understand. We've so often talked of these things, and we've always understood each other. I know, Harry, we've talked and we've dreamed of things we'd do if we were free. Some people are born free. They can do as they like without concern for consequences. But you were not born free, Harry, and nor was I. We were born into a tradition, a code which we must obey even if we do not believe. And we must obey it, Harry, because the pride and happiness of everyone surrounding us depends upon our obedience. I quite understand. There should be four feathers here. Agreed always to be honest with each other. Give it to me.
was here before. That boat clear, sir. Then you know what to expect. You too? I've been out here ever since, sir. You married? Yes, sir. Children? Four, oh, sir. When I left home. You're originally gone. Oh, yes, they've gone. Like the guards have gone tonight. Years ago, Harry, I gave you my card. Do you remember? Yes, Doctor, I remember. In case you ever needed any help. Now come along. We'll have a quiet supper at my club. It's just across the park. The Naval and Military. No, not there, if you don't mind, Doctor. Let's go to my rooms. Very well. You tell me you left the army because your duty to your home was greater than your duty towards a crowd of African peasants. Well, there's nothing dishonorable in that, Harry. If that's all, if that's the whole truth, then these feathers are an insult to be treated with the contempt they deserve. If that were all, I should have put them on the fire and you would have never seen them. But you know that it's not all. Just as if you knew. I was told a ghastly story when I was a boy, and you were there when it was told. An officer who failed to carry a message because he was paralyzed with fear. An officer disgraced and hounded out of society who shot himself in a back room off the Haymarket because his life was ruined. That story haunted me. Many a man is haunted by some fear. With me, it was more than fear. My father despised me. He believed me to be a coward. His belief turned fear into reality. I knew that if ever fate put me in the same position, I should behave like that man and meet the same end. I am a coward, Doctor. If I'd been anything but a soldier, I might have lived my whole life and concealed it. But to be a soldier and a coward is to be an imposter, a menace to the men whose lives are in your hands. When orders came for Egypt, I knew that fate was closing in round me, just as it closed round that other man. I fought against it. I believed in all the reasons I gave for shirking my job. I deceived myself, but I didn't deceive my friends. The men who sent me these feathers knew me better than I knew myself. The man who tries to cheat his fate is more than a coward, he's a fool as well. You are wrong there, Harry. I never met a fool who had the imagination to be a coward. If I thought you were a coward, Harry, I should take this with me. Fight you for it, if necessary. It's because I know you've no intention of using it on yourself that I leave it here. Harry, is there anything I can do? Yes, Doctor. There is something you can do. Yes? I shall be leaving England tomorrow. I shall write to you from time to time, just to tell you that I'm alive. If you don't hear from me for a year, you'll know that I'm dead. If that happens, I should like you to go to Ethne and tell her that at least I tried to put right the shame and humiliation that I caused her. Can you tell me where you're going? Egypt. serve with him in the hospital in India. How is he? As well, he sent to his greeting. What may I do for you? 
I have a mission to reach the army of General Kitchener. I want your help to disguise me as a native. You speak Arabic? No. You have some native tongue? No. But the army of General Kitchener is 400 miles away, across country in the hands of the enemies. How then can a doctor help you, except to certify you as mad? I'm told there is a native tribe called the Sangali that once revolted against the Halifa. And in revenge, the Halifa branded them, cut out their tongues from their heads, and made them outcasts. You know the brand? All men know the brand of the Sangali. Then you understand the reason of my visit, Doctor. But, my dear young man, you will miss your tongue in many ways. I will keep my tongue. No one will look for it if I'm branded. I can stain your skin, but I cannot imitate a scar that would escape detection. That I understand. Is your mission, then, of such importance? May I stay in your house until the wound is healed? Ah, Durrance. Told to report, sir. Your Kitchener's been talking to me. Now, you know what the situation is. The main army and provision ships must get up the Nile. Why, it's the only feasible route up country towards Andaman. But the river's blocked by the Khalifa's army, and our ships can't get through the gorge. Now, the Khalifa must be drawn away by some sort of bluff into the desert. Yes, sir. Now, if one of our brigades appeared on his flank, he'd have to turn away and face it. And that would leave the river unguarded. Yes, sir. Now, General Kitchener can't spare a regiment, much less a brigade, but he can spare a company. Number five company of the Royal North Surreys. Thank you, sir. One second, by the left, quick five. Number ten seconds, by the left, quick five. Three seconds, by the left, quick five. Four seconds, by the left, quick five. Who is this man? How much did he overhear? Oh. 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 Sangali. That was a very bad performance, Mr. Faversham. No true Sangari would enter a room with the self-assurance of an Englishman. Why was that fellow in such a funk? He was terrified you might betray him. Oh, I see. But for myself, I have no such fears. But I must admit I should feel a little more comfortable if you would tell me frankly why all this, the wandering, the disguise. In England, four people gave me a white feather apiece. They've got to take them back. Oh, a mad race, the English. No, not so mad. In England, a white feather is the mark of a coward. Ah, I see. Then why worry? Be a coward and be happy. No, Doctor. I have been a coward. And I wasn't happy. Tell me, did he bring any news? Yes, he says the North Surrey Regiment has left up to hunt. By crossing the desert, you could pick them up at the Nile. Perhaps near the Fifth Cataract. Part of Kitchener's army is going up the river in boats. They will be hauled up the cataract by native labor. There is your chance.
All right, Sergeant. All correct, sir. We've rigged up enough scarecrows to look like the entire blooming army. Ah, that ought to draw them all right. The men can rest, but they're ready to move without delay. The moment we're spotted, we won't have time to sit about and admire the view. No, sir. I'll take the men back to the camp, and you watch from that dribble over very, there. Very good, sir. Watch. No fuzzies round here. I'm the other way with the captain. All right, George.
give me orders to start him back to camp at once? His orders were to stay here till we see dervishes, and we ain't seen none. Uh, uh. It's ice we want to clap on the back of his neck. Yes, and a couple of saucy nurses to clap it on for him, don't. Can you see anything? No. We can't make it out. He said he'd be back by dawn at the latest. Well, perhaps he's spotted a covey of dervishes and wants to keep an eye on them. No, if he spotted any dervishes, he'd be back in no time. There. Corporal Levin, sir. How long have I been lying here? Since this time yesterday, sir. What's the time now? About three o'clock, sir. Call Sergeant Brown the moment it's daylight. But, but it's light now, sir. It's afternoon. Huh? Huh? Call Sergeant Brown. Yes, sir. Sergeant Brown! What is it? The captain wants it. All right. Sergeant Brown, is it? Come in, come in. Good to see you better, sir. No sign of dervishes yet? Yes, now I'll strike the camp immediately. I spotted dervish yesterday. There's not one moment to lose. Very good, sir. Corporal Clark, follow your men. Do take the captain's door. Come on, the double there. Watch out, sir. Sergeant, come here. Don't, don't go away. I want you to, to help me to my horse. Oh, very good. Captain Clark. 
Ram, but I'll strike the tent. Put on the mule and follow us on behind. Back, sir. We were getting a little worried. Ah, I need to worry. I spotted some dervish yesterday. That's why I stayed up there to keep watch. It's for us, all right, so that's half our work done. Sergeant, give the men some food. See they get to sleep immediately. Very good, sir. Willoughby? Yes, sir. Parker? Yes, sir. Put those fires out, will you? Double the sentries round here. There's no immediate danger. We've got to keep on the alert from now on. Yes, yes sir. Ron, put your fire out. Oi, right, Bill. You saying this for us? Timber, Curtis, Cable, bring the charge up, boys. Yes, Peter. I got a touch of the sun out there yesterday. Oh, hard luck, old boy. I know what it is. I had sunstroke when I was a kid at school. Oh, how, how did it affect you? Well, it gave me a devil of a headache. Oh. You know, you look a bit done in, John. You ought to take a good rest. Yes, now listen, Peter. We're not in a healthy spot here. Things may be a good deal worse before we're through. I'm feeling a bit groggy. I'm going into rest now. Will you look after things for me here tonight? Yes, of course. Shall I help you in? No, no, no. I'll be all right in the morning. Anything? No, sir. Well, keep your eyes open. Very good, sir.
The mules are restless, sir. Bad sign. Yes, I know. I should be glad when the sun rises. Yes, sir. Alarm! 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 Alarm!
sir. Yes? Ali has news, sir. Good. What does he know? Said Habakois, El Khalifa Sabinil Magish. Huh? Well, the Khalifa has left the Nile with his whole army. Fine. That's the news we're waiting for. Ransom, give all this to Said at once. Kitchener can have his battle where he wants it. Uh, thanks to Durham's. He's done a magnificent job. Mr. Zabit! Mr. Zabit! <laughs> Is that you, Peter? Peter. 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 So good pretending to more. I can't see her. I'm blind. The sun got me out there in the mountain. Why don't you speak? What's the matter? Who are you? 
But are you all dumb? You've never seen a blind man before? Who the devil are you? Speak! If you can't speak English, speak Arabic, but speak, speak! But it's true then. They're all dead. All my company wiped out. Nothing but a blind man and a dumb lunatic. There's nothing left but death from thirst. Come here. Come here. Lean your head against the one cool thing left in this blasted furnace. But you won't? All right. Well, go to the devil alone. Helmet, Sergeant, will you? Disney. Don't you like the polka? A bit jerky, isn't it? I shall love you always.
there, Doctor. I'm glad to find you alone, Esme. I really came here to talk to you. Well, Doctor? I want to know if you've heard from Harry Faversham. I've heard nothing. It was his own wish and my wish that the break should be complete. I've no idea where he is or what he's doing. I promised to give you a message when I saw him on the night before he left England a year ago. A year ago? Then I don't understand, Doctor. Well, he left England for one purpose only. If he succeeded, he said that you would learn by means that would need no explanation. If he failed, then he asked me to let you know that at least he'd done his best. I see. He promised to write to me now and then, just to show that he was still alive. If I heard nothing for a year, then his silence would show that he was dead. So that's the end. You think I behaved brutally to him, Doctor? No. I did behave brutally. I behaved like the worst kind of coward. I failed to help him when he was so terribly in need of help. Nothing that you could have done would have made him alter his decision. I could have helped him. If you'd gone on your knees, you could have done nothing. His mind was made up. You must always remember that, Ethel. For the sake of his memory, and for your own happiness. Oh, out there! What are you two mooching about outside for? Oh, just having a dose of your country air, General. It'll be a dose of bronchitis if you don't take care. Come on in, Ethne, give us some sherry. Got an officer. Blimey, he's trying to rob him. Come on, let's get him. Abdul, 
Ask him what he has to say. Yes, McKay. Hand him in then. Callum! Is it just for Callum? Oh, oh. 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 It is useless, Your Excellency. He's part of the Sangali tribe. He cannot speak. Put him with those two hosties we got yesterday. Send him to Abu Hamid to mend the roads. March him out, Sergeant. Sir. Now, oh, Doctor, how's Durrance? In full throat. Splendid. He's a fine officer. Rotoman can't spare a man like that. He's blind. Blind? Sunstroke. Exposure of the eyes to the sun. I've seen it before, Colonel. A man alone, bowled over suddenly, lies there exposed. But with rest and care, he'll get better. With immediate attention, there might have been a chance in a hundred. Now there's none. Nerves are completely destroyed. Ah. Good ah. work, boy. Good work. Good work. Aha! You'll have me riding to hounds in a couple of weeks. Up another six inches, Joe. No more today. Just one more, just a tiny little bit more. Tomorrow, John. Time to dress for dinner. Dress? I can dress in ten minutes now, and up two minutes off my record this morning. There's your shaving lesson before dinner, too, sir. Ah, yes, my shaving lesson. Also my lesson in making bow ties. Lots of fun in going back to school again, Anthony. Joe's a great teacher, ought to be a professor. Easy with a good pupil, sir. And no more of those infernal chopped up meals. I'm feeling like a lesson in carving roast chicken tonight. I'll see you at dinner. Come on, Joe. Thank you. Brave man. I hope I can make him very happy. All right, Joe, you do it for me, will you? Look here, Ethne, I... I've been wanting to say something to you for a long time. It's beastly difficult to know how to put it. Of course, it's no business of mine, but are you sure you're right in what you're doing? Quite sure. You know, a man becomes a soldier with all the knowledge of the risks ahead of him. If misfortune comes, it's all part of the game. He doesn't ask for any pity or sympathy, but you've got your whole life before you. I know it's a noble, unselfish impulse, but for 30 or 40 years, maybe 50 years... Father, please don't talk about being noble. There's nothing like that about it. It's just... Well, it's just that I've made up my mind. Yes. The Arab is a strange, unexpected creature. Yes, yes, wait a minute. You haven't heard the end yet. Here's a solitary Arab. Heaven knows where he comes from or how he's alive. He packs my map, slings my water bottle around my neck, and never says a word from beginning to end. That must have been uncanny. Uncanny. It nearly drove me mad. Yet I knew all the time he was trying to save me. How many days we traveled, I shall never know. I was crazy with fever. Must have been the best part of a week. He gets me in a boat, floats me down the Nile till he comes within sight of the camp, and then... Now, here's the extraordinary part. Having done enough to win the Victoria Cross, he lays me down outside the camp and calmly begins to rob me. Oh, nothing strange in that. Just Eastern business mentality. He'd done a job of work and was taking payment. <laughs> Poor devil got less than he bargained for. I carried no papers on active service and no money. Well, huh? you've got nothing, then. Hmm? Nearly got one thing. The only thing I was carrying. Remember this? It's my letter. Your letter. There's a funny thing in this letter. Ethne, read, read the postscript you wrote. It's still got some sand in it. You can keep the sand as a souvenir. Thank you. Let me read it. P.S. Take care not to get sunstroke. You always said I knew too much to take advice. Ethan, <laughs> darling, I'm sorry. You're trembling. You mustn't take it like that. 
It's all over now. It might have been a lot worse. I'd have been dead six months ago if it hadn't been for my little Arab friend. And what happened to your little Arab friend? Wish I knew. They sent the poor devil to a convict gang. When I came to my senses, it was too late to find him. He'd escaped. I was never able to trace him. Now for a turn in the garden. Stay here, I'll get my coat. And fetch yours, Ed. Oh, my letter. He's alive, or was when he paid that debt. Some attempts must have been made to free you. Yes, years and years ago. But they all failed. How long have you been here? Since Gordon was killed. Thirteen years.
Dream? Yes. Sea Island. Tomorrow, boat waiting. El Asan ne dakarem gova. Erga mehera. Erga mehera. So, the man musician on your mom was a British spy. Kind, listen. What message did you give to your British friends? Calavanus. The Khalifa will reward and spare you if you will do his bidding. What do you know of Kitchener's army? Calavasimu! If you want to answer, we'll flog you until you do. Answer! That's the end of that. No port for dinner. Poor devil. They flogged him. I wonder who he is. Looks like an Arab. Probably paid by our people to help us. I wonder if he's got any papers on him. Spies don't usually carry papers about. Well, I made a nice mess of that, didn't I? Pavisham. Harry, how the devil did you get here? Who sent you? Nobody. What you, what you doing here? For heaven's sake, explain, Harry. There's no time to explain. We're in an infernal mess, but there's still a chance. Now listen to me. The Khalifa has gone out to meet Kitchener. If he gets beaten, he'll slit our throats in revenge. If he wins, he'll slit him out of pure joy. Right opposite the prison gates is the arsenal of the Khalifa. That's our one chance. Just a couple of guards and a few storekeepers, and that's about all. Have you got that file? Yes, that file was an absolute brainwave. Right, you must work like babies. Now, is there anybody here who understands the language of these poor devils? Here's that old fellow over there. I'll go and fetch him. Are you all right, Harry? I'm all right, please. Harry, this is Karaga Pasha, once governor of the province of Kordofan. You speak English from the language of these people? I speak Arabic and the Greek. They all understand one or the other. Then you can do a great service to yourself and all these people. Will you tell them that I have brought the means of setting them free? Tell them that once they are freed, on no account must they make a sign of a movement until they get the word from me. We must work very fast. Tom, break that file in two. Bring me the strongest man first. Deploying to attack, sir. It's their whole army. Get 
the right. Friendly, go to the left. Tell the brigade to take up their position. Tell them to hold their fire until the last possible moment. Shut your eyes. I'll nudge you into open. Tell them it's now or never. Tell them they mustn't move an inch until the guards reach us.
350. We'll have that tower down with the black flag on it. That's the arsenal, sir. Good, then we'll blow it up. Thanks and Green, 350. Sorry, old man. Men from done it before you came. No, no, give me the matches. I'll light it. You heard the news? I've been listening. Is it true? We've got cartoon. It's just come through. Kitchener broke the dervishes' army at Omdurman. Good, good. Splendid. Well, that's that. Sit down, doctor. Whiskey? Not just now, John. You've seen Dr. Westley? I've just left him. Heiner, the German specialist, was there, too. Oh, nice fellow, that German. Took a lot of trouble. You needn't tell me the verdict, Doctor. I quite understand. I think it's what you expected, John. He doesn't feel that an operation... Neither did I. A man gets to understand these things. Has there been any sort of spark left inside that could be fanned up again? I'm certain I should have felt it there. I've known for some time that they were stone dead. Heiner explained that the trouble sometimes comes from a lesion that can be repaired by operation. But in your case... In my case, it's a complete blackout. No harm in getting the best man, anyway. You've earned your whiskey now, Doctor. Thanks. It might have been a lot worse. If I had known from the start it was hopeless, I'd probably have blown my brains out. Today it isn't half so bad. I've been learning to read this Braille stuff. Uh. Funny how quickly the fingers get sensitive. Listen. Be not afeard. The aisle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes Voices that if I then had waked after a long sleep will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds, methought, would open and show riches ready to drop upon me. That when I waked, I cried to sleep again. Splendid. Marvelous, isn't it? I knew that bit by heart, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Here's to your health, Doctor. Uh, here's to you, John. To Kitchener and his bright lads in Khartoum. Now, stretch out your legs and read the news. There's a report by Mallinson, the war correspondent. Khartoum, 2nd September. Good, good. Now, do read it. From the shadow of Gordon's palace, I am proud to send news of a glorious victory. <clears throat> At dawn this morning, after a wild night of storm and rain, scouts reported that the Dervish army was massing to give battle upon the hills above Kerere. That's where the legend said the British should be destroyed. Now, if the Dervish had ignored that silly rot and fought... Oh, shut up and listen. Sorry. At six o'clock, the Dervish army advanced in mass and flung themselves with fanatical bravery up in the British square. Hmm. Within two hours, the Dervish forces were broken in in flight. A full report when the fighting at Kerry will be sent when details are available. But your correspondent, who accompanied the Royal North Surrey Regiment... Good old Surrey's. ...was privileged to witness the most dramatic and astonishing scene in this inspiring day. Hmm. During the battle, the prisoners in the Omdurman dungeons overwhelmed their guards, captured the arsenal, and held it until relieved by Anglo-Egyptian troops. Well, oh. The achievement was led and inspired by two British officers of the Royal North Surrey Regiment, captured in the fight at Gakdul Wells, Lieutenants Burrows and Willoughby. Peter, alive! And good old Willoughby! Uh -huh. Isn't that splendid? What's the time? Time is just on seven. We'll go tonight. Right. We'll be the first to tell Anthony and the old man. Ha! He, he'll be crazy with excitement about this. Joe! Joe! Yes, sir? Pack my bag. Send a message round to Dr. Sutton's house to send his bag round here. We're going to General Burroughs, the 815 from Paddington. Oh, but I've got an important appointment in the morning, John. And, Joe! Yes, sir? Tell Dr. Sutton's man to cancel all his appointments for tomorrow. Oh, but Ethne and the General will know before we get there. They won't. They never get the evening papers in that place until the morning. <laughs> we'll just walk in and break the news. And the war office is certain to send a telegram. You've always got some confoundedly cold-blooded reason for doing nothing. Anyway, we'll be the first to congratulate them. Don't you realize what this means? Peter alive and done a grand job of working to the bargain. Is there any more? Re read that last bit again. Huh? Lieutenant Sparrows and Willoughby, hmm. whose release from prison was due to an act of heroism described to me personally by Lieutenant Burroughs. Ah. A man posing as a dumb Sangali native gained entrance to the prison with means of cutting the chains of the captives. He suffered torture and faced death to do so because in reality he was until recently an officer of their own regiment. Lieutenant Faversham. Why should he try to rob me? Doctor. Yes, John? There's some notepaper on my desk there. I want you to write a letter for me. I'm ready, John. To Ethne Burroughs. Dear Ethne. I've just had some splendid news. I've been to a famous German eye doctor, and my sight can be restored. Got that? I've got that, John. It means a long course of treatment in Germany, and I leave tomorrow. When I can see again, I shall return to the army with a happy memory all you have done to help me through. I'll sign it myself. And add a postscript. P.S. Just heard the splendid news of Peter and Willoughby and Harry Favisham. I enclose a little souvenir of a journey through the desert with a dumb Sengali native. If you give him the chance that he deserves, you'll find he's not as mute as I thought he was. That's all. Your bags are packed, sir. There's just time for a bite of dinner if you hurry. All right, Joe. We're not going after all. I... I still say the army of today is soft compared with our time. Soft! That's your trouble. 
Still, you did your best. And as Harry has made you two young rascals take your feathers back, well, he'd better marry the girl and have done with it, eh, Doc? Hmm? It's not as easy as all that. There's my feather, too. What deed of reckless daring are you going to do to make me take back my feather? Must I? Deeds of reckless quarrel. Stuff and nonsense. No such thing nowadays. All you boys had to do was deal with fuzzy wuzzy. But the Crimea was different. War was war in those days. No room for weaklings. Take Balaclava, for instance. Ah, you of course, you fellows wouldn't remember the position. But it, it was the... Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here were the Russians. Guns, guns, guns. On the right, the British infantry. One moment, sir. Your famous account of Balaclava is not accurate, you know. No. Not accurate, sir. Not accurate? No, sir. Let me recall the position. Out of the way. Here are the Russians behind the walnuts. Guns, guns, guns. Here's the British infantry. The thin red line. Here's the commander-in-chief. And here are you, at the head of the old 68th, correct? Absolutely. You were riding a horse called Caesar, which my father sold you because, fine horseman though he was, he could never hold him himself. Quite right. Quite right. <laughs> then, according to your story, you said, the 68th will move forward. Quite right. Quite right. Yes, sir. The trouble is you never said it. No. You never said it, sir. Never said it? No, sir. You never had time. At that moment, my father told me, Caesar, uh, Caesar, Caesar, startled by a stray bullet, took the bit between his teeth and dashed straight at the Russian lines. Away went Caesar, away went you. Away went the 68th, away went the commander-in-chief, away went everybody. And another magnificent mistake was added to an already magnificent record. Oh. But nobody ever said the 68th will move forward. Unless it was the horse. Come on, sir. Own up. Well, 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 after all these years, it's rather difficult to remember all the details, but... Confound the boy, I shall never be able to tell that story again. <laughs> 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 <laughs>